Hello, this is Reza Rad from Radacad. Uh, in this video, I'm going to talk about how to organize your workspaces in Power BI. If you don't know, do you need like one workspace for everything or one workspace per report or how to actually separate your workspaces? This is a guide for you. Let's check it out. Because of my role, normally I'm involved in many uh, workspace design piece of work. When I deal uh, as an architect of a specific Power BI project, uh, one of the discussions is normally how to structure the workspaces. So that is why I created this video and blog. Um, first thing is that what is a workspace in Power BI? Now I consider you already know a little bit about workspaces. I'm not going to explain that all in details, but imagine workspace is like a working environment, You like a shared folder. You can have Power BI content in it and then share it with others. That is uh, what a workspace looks like. Now, uh, there are more details about it. I use the link down in the description below, which explain what the workspace is in my other article and video. Now, uh, what you need to understand is that a workspace is a single sharing unit. Uh, when you have, let's say, 10, 20 different Power BI reports in one workspace, you share them as one. For example, if I give someone uh, member access to my workspace or even viewer access to my workspace, that person will have access to everything. Now, there are two uh, kind of like not exception, but two uh, important things to discuss here. One is that uh, using Power BI apps, which is like a package you create on top of workspace, you can share a subset of a workspace. Like for example, if you have 10, 15 reports in the workspace, you can create an app and only share, let's say seven, six of those reports. But you can only create one app per workspace at the moment. Uh, another thing is that using a basic sharing, the share button you see at the top of the report, you can share one single um, one single um, Power BI report or dashboard. I'm not talking about that in this video because that is not, let's say, a proper way of sharing in a production environment anyway. So what we are talking about here is basically workspaces sharing using like uh, roles such as uh, member, administrator, contributor, viewer, or Power BI apps. If you follow those, then you cannot share the content of workspace with like different type of audience. It's like one sharing unit. That is an important uh, understanding point because based on that, then you need to decide how to separate your workspaces. For example, if I have um, some of my sales reports, and some of my HR reports, all of that in one workspace, I cannot really share it separately. I cannot say, well, HR reports should be shared with this HR user, sales report should be shared with sales users, and they will not see each other's data. That is not how the workspace in Power BI works, at least not now. It might change in the future. Uh, the way that we should do it is to separate it by the audience. So if I have two different reports for two different audiences, for example, uh, sales report for sales users and HR reports for HR users, uh, then I put them in two different workspaces. There is no point of having them in one workspace. Uh, I can have it in two different workspaces. Uh, another reason to, so, so one reason for having separate workspaces is actually uh, having different audiences. Another good reason for separating workspaces is to split the load. Let's say you have a uh, you have a report, it is uh, on a really high consumption rate. You have, let's say, 20,000 users using this report. So you need to be careful that this is responding fast. On the other hand side, you have some other reports that are, do not have that many users. They might have like 10, 15 users. Uh, one of the ways uh, to split the load is that, and this is the case only for scenarios that you have dedicated capacity, such as Power BI Embedded or Power BI Premium, you can actually have your workspace on a specific capacity node. So one workspace can be on this node, another can be on another node. So with that, you can do some configuration like that to split the load. As I said, this is a um, option only if you use that dedicated capacity with multiple option nodes options. 
another really important thing is to use shared workspaces. Now I explained that we need workspaces per user audience, like sales workspace for sales user, HR workspace for HR users. But the fact is that in the reports we have in sales report and HR report, some of these might use some components um, which is the same in both of these, such as a date table. You might need a date table, you might need a timetable, you might need a currency table. These are things that a lot of reports normally in your organization need that. So consider using shared workspaces. A shared workspace can be something like this, a workspace. Most of the time they might have just data flows in it. And again, if you don't know what data flows is, use links down in the description below. In my blog post, you will find about it. Um, it's a way that you can create like a shared table. You can have shared data sets as well. And then your other workspaces can be consumers of the content from that workspace. So actually, uh, this is a workspace that I might not have a real end user connecting to that. I might have other workspaces to be consumers of this workspace. Um, instead of like repeating this in each workspace, I actually separated it like that. So consider that that helps a lot in reducing redundancy, increasing consistency. It's a really good development practice to do that. Now, shared workspaces is not just like one generic workspace that everyone uh, that all workspaces have access to. It might be multiple shared workspaces. As an example, date, time, currency. These are tables that probably I use it in all workspaces anyway. But there are some um, some other uh, workspaces that might uh, have only like a subset of data for specific workspaces. For example, in sales and accounting in both, I normally use account tables. So I can create that in the account workspace, but that is not needed for HR, right? So this is a workspace shared among these two. However, it's not uh, generic as this one that is shared across all workspaces. You can have layers of shared workspaces. This is really important consideration. Always think about these practice. Another really important uh, reason for separating workspaces is to separate environments. In a proper um, software development life cycle, you need to have like different environment. You need to have an environment for uh, users, but that environment cannot be the same environment that you develop into it because your development environment, you might delete something, you might edit something, and that also cannot be the same environment as your test environment. So um, uh, you can start with three layers, but you can end up with like seven layers. There are multiple layers of uh, like uh, having the test production and things like that. But the fact is that uh, the best practice is to have those environments. Now in Power BI, we have like Power BI Premium, we have the concept of deployment pipelines, which helps you to deploy between these. But even if you don't have that, you can use some PowerShell scripts to, to do this uh, approach of like deploying from dev to test to production. And each of these would have different user audience. So this is one of the really important practices of separating um, workspaces uh, and based on that having separate environments as well. Uh, consider workspaces as different development layers. Now this is not exactly like what you learned in here dev test production. Even in development environment you might have multiple workspaces. Now I explained about this in um, the uh, Microsoft documentation about data flow I wrote that uh, if you are using, for example, data flows, one of the good practices is to have staging data flows that is just getting data as is, storing it in um, Dataverse or Azure Data Lake Storage, then some transformation data flows that gets data from there and store it in Power BI dataset. And there are some benefits for that many actually, like for example, being able to change any of these layers at any time you want without affecting the other layer. Um, the transformation data flows can itself be multiple layers. So consider workspaces as kind of aid to have multiple development layers in your implementation. In a real world implementation, we have like more than two uh, layers of data flows. And this is not just about data flows, data sets can be also in the party as well. So in overall, uh, 
if you think how to organize your workspace structure, it's not a simple thing. You need to consider many things. You need to first consider like how your user audiences are different. You might need different workspaces for them. And you need to also consider, are you doing the dev test production environments, then how to manage that. Um, if you have some really high usage, some really use, low usage, you need to consider catering for that using shared workspaces to bring more consistency into your reporting and reduce the redundancy, reduce the amount of code you need to write. Um, and also uh, in the development environment, you can have multiple workspaces as well. So designing workspace structure needs a lot of thinking. It's, need, it's not the case that, well, I need one workspace, that's all, or I need one workspace per report. You need to have a lot of thinking about it. Uh, and then design it based on that. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me in the comments below. I would love to see what your scenario is and help. Uh, if you like this video, go ahead and subscribe into our YouTube channel. We have weekly videos about Power BI.